Good morning and welcome to the Etsy virtual event on boosting the impact of research and innovation through standardization. I'm Guy Daniels and joining me now from Brussels is Pierce O'Donoghue, Director, Future Networks Director at DG Connect at the European Commission. Pierce looks after policy development and research as regards 5G networks, IoT, cloud and data flows, service platforms and next generation internet. Welcome Pierce, thanks for joining us. I shall hand over to you for your presentation on the European policies that are driving the R&I agenda. Thank you, Guy, and good morning. It's great to be able to speak to you this morning. I want to start just by setting a couple of major political milestones that set the frame for this very important subject, because already when she was taking up office, our president, President von der Leyen, she signaled that in her political guidelines, Europe must lead the transition to a healthy planet and to a new digital world. So digital technologies and their implementation are very high on this Commission's agenda, as they offer great opportunities for Europe's economy and our society, of course, including, by the way, to achieve our climate goals. And even so now in the situation with COVID, we've seen that digital technologies and high-speed networks have played a crucial role in keeping whole parts of the economy and the society going. The second landmark was the recovery strategy to deal with that COVID crisis that the Commission presented at the end of May, which has investments, research and deployment in digital technologies as central to its unprecedented budgetary proposal to get Europe moving again after the COVID crisis. That's what we're calling the recovery and resilience facility. Uh, and that focuses a lot on, on digital. Because the third landmark was the State of the Union speech by President von der Leyen on the 16th of September. She proposed that 20% of that recovery and resilience facility be invested in the digital infrastructure and in the digital transition. Now that target was confirmed subsequently by the heads of government when they met in early October. And as such, that new fund offers an unprecedented opportunity to build a more digital Europe. The 20% target, which corresponds to about 134 billion euros in the life cycle of this new fund, that's only a, a fraction of the investment uh, that has been identified as needed for Europe. Several member states are already identifying investments in digital as a top priority for their future recovery and resilience plans. And we want to see that duplicated across the European Union. Because we have identified common European challenges and opportunities under that fund to be uh, centered on digital and climate change. And we're in, uh, encouraging member states to include reforms and investments in such flagships in their plans. Now, one of those flagships is, of course, dedicated to connectivity, notably 5G, as well as to fibre coverage. Because investments in 5G as part of these plans, they need to address the shift beyond consumer services to, towards infrastructure and service solutions for industry, for the whole economy, verticals as we call them, which together make up the backbone of Europe's economy. This will set a way forward for investments in a pan-European set of networks and services. They will have a strong single market approach, an all Europe approach. And of course, they will be aligned with our increased security needs, such as you saw in the 5G cyber toolbox. So with those big political objectives in mind, if we look at European research innovation, it's very important to be realistic. We can't just wave a financial magic wand for all of our goals to be achieved. We need to research, we need to develop the technologies, and of course, we need to ensure that the results of that research and innovation can be rapidly implemented, and that can only happen through standardization. Otherwise, we will have a cacophony, we will have fragmentation, and we will not achieve our objectives. And with regard to research and innovation, 
connectivity is a domain where we in Europe already have proven expertise. As we showed in 5G research since 2011, in fact, that was when the Commission launched what was then a pioneering research and innovation set of actions in 5G. That was followed by the 5G Public-Private Partnership, which was the largest research and innovation initiative in the world in 2013. And that was followed subsequently by the Alliance of IoT Innovation, the AIOTI, in 2015, which also covered the domain of the Internet of Things, which is essential to modern communications networks. Now, my boss, Commissioner Breton, he has stressed several times that European industry is well positioned in 5G. We hold about 50% of global market share, as well as about 50% of the intellectual property rights that are held by major suppliers. Now, it is the Commission's objective that Europe maintains and builds on this global leadership. We've already initiated in 2018, pioneering 6G research and innovation under the Horizon 2020 program. And now, uh, as we look forward, we're working on the implementation of the 6G partnership with industry and the member states under what will be called, as you know, the forthcoming Horizon Europe program. Now, this new partnership on smart networks and services, which will lead us to 6G, will strengthen cooperation and involvement of member states, as well, of course, as European industry, who have been at the backbone of our efforts so far, and the Commission, using a new management structure, which is called the joint undertaking. Because here there is an opportunity to raise EU leadership across the whole 5G and 6G value chain, including in things like chips and semiconductors. And indeed, that's the objective. It's to cover the whole supply chain with a view to rebuilding EU capabilities in certain domains like uh, devices and distributed computing, in addition to the areas such as connectivity, where there is already EU leadership. That is a very important strategic challenge. So we envisage also the participation of these vertical industries that I referred to earlier with strong IoT and cloud components to build on and leverage EU's industrial capabilities. To achieve our objectives, however, we can't do it on our own. So this is where the Commission has been raising the idea recently of open strategic autonomy, because our efforts to promote and fund innovation and investments, they have to extend to the security issues, notably, as you saw in the context of 5G. We're making participation in EU funding programmes contingent on compliance with security requirements, as you would expect. And also, given the strategic importance of this sector, the European headquarter players are also an important uh, element in this uh, story. Any concrete investment by non-European actors is very likely to fall under the investment screening tools and the provisions that exist at both national and at EU level, because those types of investments in what are strategically important sectors need to be assessed in relation to security and public order interests of the member states and of the European Union. If we combine those instruments, this will contribute to Europe's efforts to reinforce our industrial capabilities and to secure Europe's open strategic autonomy with a strong industrial presence in this field. This is to position us on the global stage and is an answer to the rather aggressive policies that are being followed recently, both by the United States and to China. We make no secret of that. We want Europe to become autonomous across key areas of the whole digital supply chain, while protecting and ensuring that those networks operate according to European values. But we have to be very clear Protectionism is not an option. It is not something that we can actually work with. We are supporters of open and fair trade by seeking alliances with like-minded global partners. We have to strengthen the single market and we have to adapt it to the digital age by having stronger industrial and technological presence in a whole set of strategic sectors, such as artificial intelligence, but also cybersecurity itself, supercomputing, and cloud and edge computing. We also have to strengthen our own resilience and our ability to develop more and better connectivity 
particularly by continuing our efforts to roll out 5G quickly. And this is why we have been counting on Member States' support to extend our leadership in 5G, but also to extend that into 6G in the whole value chain, as I've said. And we need to ensure that at each level of the next generation communications technologies, that the ecosystems that we see in the industrial space will actually lead developments and demand for these new communications technologies. So the situation will be radically different from today. And it is why Europe has not been as quick to trumpet successes in new speeds for consumer video, etc., which is not what 5G is about and certainly not what 6G will be about. There will be opportunities for research in 5G and 6G, including in that microelectronics. And we would see further industrial strategic alliances of European companies needing to work together with the support of member states and European Union funding in order to actually take this strategic lead. So we have to focus on European strategic projects. That's clear. We have to build capacity. We have to build the digital infrastructures. And of course, we have to see that there are um, solutions, not just for business, but also for the public sector. And that really brings us then to ensuring that we go from research to large scale deployment and to support the digitalization of the whole economy. Which brings us back to standardization, which is essential in this process that I've described. Now, Europe's leading role in research and innovation means that European entities have a significant share of intellectual property in the fields that I've been talking about. For example, several hundreds of contributions to 3GPP standards on 5G come from the results of European research projects carried out under the 5G PPP. So from a European perspective, it's important that we maintain a strong global presence while also enlarging our activities to new stakeholders, such as the vertic uh, vertical industries that I've referred to. So with that, with an appropriate technological development base, global market access, then we may be able to realize our, our ambitions of getting to market leader status. So for us in Europe, standardization at global level is important and directly linked to European leadership. Of course, also the research that is done needs to be rewarded. We believe that the European companies who invest massively in research and innovation should be properly remunerated for their efforts. So as well as that, we need an inclusive standardization process. That's a prerequisite for a global approach to standards. While coping with certain divergences between markets, between regions, nevertheless, it is a key to seize the strategic opportunities. The standardization agenda needs to address important use cases, i.e. be inclusive, beyond simple things like higher capacity or data rates. Another prerequisite is open standards. These are crucial for the development of the digital economy. Now, our strategy on standardization aims at maintaining technological leadership and strategic autonomy, as I've said, but we need to do so in order to avoid the risk of becoming reliant and dependent on important technologies and innovation. And that is why open standards are so important so that we can actually develop and adapt technologies to European needs and to European standards. That's something that is uppermost in our thinking as we seek to address the standardization policy issues. Similarly, global standards are key to support the ambitious use cases that we have, including, for example, in 5G. So for the first time in history, the prospects of one single 5G global standard is real. And that's very important given the process of the 3G PP in defining a global standard and something that we want to repeat. So just to say it again, we need inclusive standardization, open standards and global standards. And going back to the start, President von der Leyen, she acknowledged the importance of standardization in her political guidelines. So as well as speaking about climate and digital, she signaled that as we already stand in telecoms, we need elsewhere, and I quote, 
to replicate this success and develop joint standards for our 5G networks. She also highlighted Europe's ambition to achieve technological sovereignty in critical areas like blockchain, high performance computing, quantum computing and so on, and to allow data sharing and data usage. She said, we will jointly define standards for this new generation of technologies that will become the global norm. So that's what we have to do with you working together to really implement and make real this strategic autonomy and doing it through standardization with the member states and all concerned stakeholders, including academia, of course, and last, but by definitely no means least, the European standardization organizations. These European standardization organizations should also reflect on the issue and see how they can best serve the objectives of Europe's strategic policies. They can do so by ensuring the active and determinant role of key European partners, which should also be reflected in their membership and particularly in their decision-making process. The fact that a small number of non-European companies are able to pay for a huge number of members of staff attending all sorts of standardization meetings should not by their preponderance lead to their ability to actually control the ultimate standards that result. So now I've given you a lot of issues to think about, but they're challenges that we all face and challenges where the Commission needs the input and the support of so many different actors. And that's why I'm really looking forward to the discussion at this conference. And I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to address you. Thank you. Thank you, Pierce. And hopefully we'll talk more about standardization and the digital connected ecosystem during our panel discussion later today. Now we have two days of content still to come, including presentations, panel discussions and interviews. And if you miss anything, don't worry, it's all going to be available to watch later on demand. Plus, we're taking your questions during a live Q&A session at the end of each day. And you can submit your questions now. No need to wait for the session to begin. Please stay with us for our next session, which is an interview with Balash Batenyi, 3GPP TSG RAN chairman, who will be talking about innovation in 5G standardization. Goodbye for now. Thank <laughs> you.